Center for Inspired Teaching is a nonprofit organization that works with teachers. Um, we have been doing this work for 20, almost 28 years. Um, our home base has been in Washington, D.C., but we work all over the place. And as we've expanded to offering things online, sometimes we even work in other countries. So um, our approach is focused on the idea, this, this core idea at the bottom, that every child and teacher should love coming to school. Um, and how do we make that something that happens? Um, we have this framework over here with all the circles. We believe that um, school experiences should be filled with what we call the four eyes: intellect, inquiry, imagination, and integrity. And how do we make classrooms that are full of that? Those are these five circles on the outside that speak to what we call the core elements. So they're classrooms where mutual respect is central, where students have opportunities to share their expertise, where the activities that students engage in are purposeful, help build persistence and involve a lot of action. Um, there are classrooms that are filled with joy. We feel like that is a word that we don't use enough in education um, and that should be present uh, in, in every child's day. And we also believe that there's not just one way to gauge how students are learning and how they are being successful and how they're growing in class. So we want there to be wide ranging evidence of student learning. And in the classroom, this kind of learning happens in these two circles that you see here, these cycles. The wonder experiment learn circle is what students experience. And then the um, observe, plan and instigate is what teachers do. And you'll see these themes kind of pop up in the activities that I share tonight, um, but this is the framework that guides the work that we do with teachers. There are rules, there are, um, there are behaviors, there are expectations that kind of govern the way that improvisational actors work together. And for, since the founding of Inspired Teaching, we have always believed that that is also core. These rules also apply to what we do as teachers. And so we're gonna, I'm gonna share five of them with you tonight that kind of that speak to that, that speak to these core elements of what an inspired teacher does in their classroom and also what an improvisational actor does when they are entering into a scene or doing a, an, an activity or playing a game with one another. Respect what others create takes it to the next level and talks about the expectation that in this learning space, we are all going to be creating together. We are creating knowledge, we are creating connections, we are creating projects, we're creating art, we're creating language, we're creating together. And in that context, respecting what each other creates is an expectation, is one of our rules. Knowing your goal is a really important part of improvisation. It is what allows us to do all of the other kind of creative, spontaneous thinking around the work that we do with our students. Yes and says I'm going to agree but then I'm also going to figure out how to build on what you've brought. So I'm not going to shut you down if my student comes to me with a kind of off the wall answer and I'm thinking I want to try to say yes and it means I'm going to, to figure out a way to sort of accept what they've brought but then think about a way to continue to move them forward towards that goal. Playing big looks different in lots of different contexts. We aren't always playing. You have to do an assessment and assessments don't often um, involve that much play. But where in the course of your learning with your students can you create space for playing? Because we actually learn a lot when we play, when we're in that comfortable space of joy and laughter. So thinking about ways to bring that more into our teaching um, is why this rule is there. In an improvisational scene, if you're acting with someone and someone, I don't know, flubs a line or does something like that, rather than sort of pointing that out and saying, oh no, that went, that went wrong, 
we take that and we figure out how to build on that and use the learning from that mistake, as it were, to actually figure out how to carry our scene forward. And for our students, the opportunity to practice failure is so important and helps to build life school skills of resilience and being able to respond to change and being able to navigate uncertainty. As the students coming in, come in, giving them an index card or giving them something physical that they're then going to respond to. So here's an example. When they come into the classroom, as they're coming in, or you can have them these sitting on their desks, they get a card with a word on it, and their challenge is to use that word in a sentence that shares something that they experienced today. Again, you can modify the prompt, you can modify the words. This is a great way to jump right in with vocabulary, but let's try this just today for all of us here. Um, pick one of these words and share a sentence in the chat, or you can share it out, share it out loud that uses that word to, to share something that you experienced. There's all kinds of different learning that can come from it, but it is challenging students to think, um, to use that kind of improvisational thinking because they are, they're, they're given, they're handed something and they're building with it. They're, they're thinking sort of spontaneously in response to something, some prompt that they're given. And depending on how you have the students debrief or share with one another, it can also be a really good opportunity for students to respect what each other, what, what everybody creates when they share the sentences that they've written. If you have students sit down and write them and then you quickly go around the room and have everybody share their sentence, it can be a way for everybody to share, everybody to contribute, everybody to, to give each other some positive feedback. I've got these three actual color names of colors right here. And take a moment to write a poem in which each line uses the color name that's here. So we'll just take a minute. I'm going to play some quiet music for us. And we'll take one minute and see what happens because it's kind of magical, the wide variety that comes from this. So you're writing a poem and each line of your poem will use a different one of these color names. <laughs> this sage invited me to take go past the green light and leapfrog into the day with celerity. I couldn't keep celery ahead. <laughs> I hope that's okay. <laughs> that is there there see this is a beautiful example of uh of yes and yes and you can <laughs> absolutely sorry. change the word. I love it. <laughs> um, oh Jenny will you read yours? Am I a celery seedling? Are you, are we all, in the sage green light of this new day in the world, laughter leapfrogs from being to being? Great. That was beautiful. Beautiful. Anyone else want to share? Oh, Steph, can we hear yours? I said celery, the color of my mother's painting room. For real. Leapfrog over your fears. Breathe in sage green, the color of calm. These are beautiful. They're We're poets. Talking. Yes. <laughs> All right. Shamir, did you have one you want to share? Sure. I had to look things up, so I was on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning I had to go back to like my old stuff. Because I know you guys don't know this about me, but I write poetry as well. But I had to go and say, oh, let's write a haiku. So let's set the stage. Sage green light moves forward like a jumping leapfrog bound. Celery we ate. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Yes, I, um, I also had a hard time adding celery, but I feel like that's the... That's kind of the beauty of having a random list. Mine said, in the sage green light of dusk, I watched the lightning bugs leap frog through the yard, munching on celery plucked still warm from the garden. <laughs> this is actually a warm up that you can do. Um, it could be done in a circle. It could be done with students sitting in their desks. Um, and there's a variety of different, you, you can do this multiple times with different objects, but it starts this 
version we're doing tonight starts with a pen. So you might think that this is a pen, but I'm going to tell you that this is not a pen. This is actually a back scratcher. And so that is what the whole activity is about. You have to stick with the same shape of whatever the object is, but you pass it to someone else and they have to tell you that it is not a back scratcher, but it is something, whatever they come up with. So I'm gonna pass it to, um, so Margo, I just said this is not a pen, it's a back scratcher. And Margo, I'm now passing you this back scratcher and you can take it from me. This is not a back scratcher, it's a quill. Oh, a quill, I like it. All right, and Margo, who do you wanna pass it to? Um, I'm gonna pass it to Shamir. Okay. So this is not a quill, it is a mustache. And I'm gonna pass it to Steph. This is a coffee stirrer. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yes, so you've got, and, and now you can pass it to Jenny. Yeah, Jenny, go ahead. This is not a coffee stirrer, it is actually a very thin, oh, Thin vial of bubble tea. <laughs> I love it. Yes, a very and the bubbles would have to be very tiny in there. Mm. Um, so this can be fun. You can do it with all kinds of different objects. The first time I ever played this, I remember we did it with a roll of tape. Um, and so the the shape of the object can get you thinking in all kinds of creative ways. The rules of the game are that whatever you're coming up with still has to 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 fit. The size and shape of it so you couldn't say um this is not a pen it's a tire because that wouldn't really work with the shape of it but you all you all jumped in and followed that that beautifully when i do this activity um it's we call it imaging to music uh, with with teachers with students anywhere that i go i have a running collection of songs that i collect and i generally try to pick songs that I don't think that my students will ever have heard before. And I try to pick songs where the music is doing some unexpected things because we'll see why in a minute that helps everybody to to go on their own personal journeys. you just to share out what you saw. What did you see? You can also do this as a writing exercise, but for tonight, you've had a long day. We're just going to share share verbally. What did you see when you heard that song? I can go. Great. Yeah, um, I saw a lot of things. Yeah. The beginning of the music, a uh, picture is somebody was bouncing a ball like in their hands. And then towards the middle, uh, I saw somebody playing musical instruments. And then towards the end, as I keep listening, just don't think about it. I saw a picture of four person rowing. Oh, wow. It took me in different place. Yeah. Yeah. Were they all in a, were they in a shell? Were they all rowing together? Yeah. Rowing together, like, like in the middle of the, whatever, it was an ocean, but yeah. they just rowing. And I was like, oh, this is so relaxing. Like listening oh. to the music and, picturing what was in my mind. Beautiful. Thank you for thank you for starting us off and taking us to all those different places. What did what else did did folks see? In my case, um I felt I was in the middle of forest, nature, animals, uh plants, love green, um beautiful colors, insects, smaller, bigger animal than small insects and it was just uh, in a very lush environment, very green, like in, a, you know, in the middle of nature. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was fun. It was interesting. Yeah, no, beautiful. I can see that place too. And so we were in two very different terrains, but I can picture both of those, both of those places that you saw. What else? Following Cecile, I was actually working the same as she was working, but I was working in a small town, coastal town, with the seas like washing the the little and it was a very calm evening and the stores were open the people were just sitting there and i was just walking to the street looking at the people 
uh, feeling the breeze, listening to the sea, just like that. That's why I envision. Beautiful. Yes. So we've been, we've been in in the lush forest. Um, on the water, rowing, walking through a seaside town. What did you see, Stephanie? Um, honestly, I think I just saw people like um, pitching in, you know, because people, it was in incremental. And the song just kept building on each other. And so I, I saw not a specific place, but people just, like joining in so it's the flutes and then it was people singing and yeah and then they just kind of like kind of walk off you know when they're done their part or they yeah. just wait and they're just enjoying the end of the song that's beautiful so shamir and i are going to do we're going to show you an example of um of what it looks like when we live in a yes but kind of world um and shamir will get us started sure so jenna i'm so excited i have two tickets to go to lion king do you want to go oh lion king um yes but i am a little worried that it might be a little too loud for me well from what I know, you can have some earphones and I bet it will be muffled, will be fine. Oh yes, but the earphones that I um, that I usually wear to events like this, my um, one of them broke, one of the ear things fell off and broke. No problem, that's why Amazon is two day shipping. I will find you some earphones so we can go together. Oh, well, thank you so much um, for thinking of that. Yes, I, I, I do wanna go, but um, also, I forgot to ask, what, what day of the week is it? Happening? Oh, we're Thursday. This coming Thursday? Yes, please. Yes. Thursday. Oh. Tomorrow. Yes. Oh, oh, tomorrow. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I, I, I would like to go tomorrow, but here's a problem because um, since it's tomorrow, I don't think we're going to get the headphones on time. You know, that's true, but I know that I can go ahead and go to the store and find them. Actually, you know what? Since I work in a school, I know that we have a speech pathologist and I can get some headphones for you right away. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, but um, what if, um, what if it's, what if it's really late and then we have to, we still have to teach the next day? If you want, you can sleep over at my house and we'll wake up together and we can carpool together as well. Oh yes, but I, your couch is not really that comfortable. <laughs> That is not true. I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure. All right. So we'll stop that. I hate being a butt person. It's not enjoyable. So in in watching that and watching that interaction right there, and thank you, Shamir. You were you were you were joyfully persistent. I would have been like, fine. I'm taking someone else. A long long time ago. Um, what were what were some of the things that stuck out to you about that kind of an interaction? It made you look so. I kept wanting to say, what's the, what is really the problem here? What is it? You know, but the suspicion would be on the part of Shamir is she doesn't really like me. It's not about the Lion King at all. Yeah. 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 Wow. Painful. It's painful to play that person. Yes. <laughs> what did it, what did it feel like for you, Shamir? Like what was going through your head? There was too many excuses for me, <laughs> too many. And but you had like a line for everything that I said, and I'm like, I don't, I'm, I'm still gonna take you. We're going. I don't care what you're talking about. We're going. Because <laughs> you knew your goal. You knew where you wanted. You knew where you wanted to wanted things. Yeah, because we're besties, and I want you to come. <laughs> no, I really actually do want to go see the Lion King, but you know, I was having a, an off day. Um, but uh, but so so a yes, but approach. I mean, I think all of us have probably experienced administrators for whom that's the case, or or just not maybe not an administrator, but colleagues, where it's sort of like I'm coming to you with an idea, a way that I think we could try to do something different, and then we just kind of keep getting hit with the, with the yes, but experience. Um, but let's let's see for a minute what this looks like done a different way, and this is the this is the fun that you can have with your students. Um, we'll start again and. Um, and and set the scene, Shamir. You you be, you start us off. 
Do you still want to go see the Lion King or we can do something else? Oh, yes. And when we go to the Lion King, what do you think of us getting um, matching outfits? I would love a matching outfit. Can we be Simba and Nyla? Yes. And I actually have um, ears that I got from um, Great Wolf Lodge a long time ago. And I think if we just like dye them or something, they'll look just like that. And I'm thinking we should paint our noses and give ourselves some whiskers. Oh, yes. And I think that um, it would also be appropriate for us to go to um, to have some spring, some snacks that are kind of Lion King themed. Oh, a Lion King snack. Oh, I'm thinking gummy worms because Simone and Pumbaa, they had worms. Yes. And there's also some other gummy like bug shapes so we could have a variety because don't they eat beetles too they do yes they do and yes i'm thinking you know what to add to our ensemble i'm thinking that we can get a tail that would be awesome yes it would perfect all right thank you and scene so yes and a very different that was fun i really we got we got to get tickets to the lion king that's got to be what happens next. are they coming to dc i don't know they are um, they are really Oh, I'm lying. That was, I was looking at stuff in New York. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Um, so yes, and is very different. The rules of the game are just that you you. What I'm going to do, we're, we're going to play it in just a moment. But you start with a you start with a, a goal or a prompt, um, and then the goal is when you play this with a partner to keep building. This is also an example of building on what um, building rather than blocking. So whatever the idea is, where wherever the story is going, I'm going to take what. Um, my partner is giving me and I'm going to respect what they are creating and then I'm going to build on it and say yes and and I'm going to figure out how to keep it keep it going keep it escalating so it's a great way to get creative juices flowing to have students practice with um, thinking about how to build on what each other are saying um, it's another opportunity to learn how each of you thinks um, and when you have your students do it, it often helps to give them a prompt like that, that they'll do the yes and around because otherwise they can take a long time sort of figuring out where they want to begin. Um, and you, you usually want your prompt to be something very concrete, like a, a, a thing that they're like getting a puppy, starting a band. Some of the other examples I have are um, planning a surprise party for a friend, going camping usually something that's going to involve some planning and coordination works really well for a yes and um, activity or going to the lion king which we, we got some good mileage out of 